Welcome. I'm Dr. Howard Ben. I work for Samsung Electronics at Samsung Research in the UK, and I'm the Vice President of Communications Research. So my role is to look at uh, the communications technology, 3GPP standards, and standardizing that technology. What I'll talk about today is some of our vision for the future and for 6G. So it only seems like a couple of years ago that I was talking about 5G before 5G was even uh, thought about in commercial terms. Turns out that was actually seven years ago, and I gave similar talks on 5G as I'm going to introduce you to 6G today. 75 networks out there as of April, about 101 networks today. Uh, and you can get a lot more information on that from the GSM Suppliers Association and gsacom.com. So we've seen this evolution of technologies, higher bit rates, lower latencies, and a whole raft of additional features added with every release that we have in 3GPP. We're also seeing the time to develop standards reducing, and the commercial networks are coming out a little bit quicker if for every new release that we have. That may be hindered slightly with our current situation with COVID-19. We've already seen a six month delay in release 17 in the 3GPP standards. Hopefully by the time we get into release 19 and 20, uh, we'll have caught up with ourselves again. So what are the key trends? What do we need to do differently? Well, now we've connected nearly every human being on the planet, it's time to connect more machines. We've talked about this for many, many years. IoT predictions have always been very large, sometimes I think uh, over-exaggerated, but we're now at the stage where more and more things are getting connected, and they're getting connected over cellular as well as over Wi-Fi. That will increase over time. We're also seeing the world of artificial intelligence and machine learning coming along, transforming the way that mobile networks are run, operated and planned. We are seeing more of this on a daily basis. So everything from something simple like how do I save power in my base station to how do I plan my new network and how do I work out when the network is going wrong. Open source and open interfaces, another expanding area. We've always had open interfaces within the 3GPP based technologies. Some would argue they are not open enough, and the ORAN Alliance are looking at this at the moment and opening up more of the radio interfaces. People like ONAP are starting to do open source software for some of the uh, operations and maintenance interfaces and some of the core network interfaces. So vast amounts of work in opening those networks up. Samsung are very much behind a number of these alliances. We're working in the world where social goals are going along with mobile communications goals. So we are making our network greener. We're working with factories and smart factories to make them more efficient, more energy efficient, less waste. Uh, working with education, we've seen a lot of um, education at home recently with the COVID situation. We're generating more and more of the ability of people to do that in an efficient manner. Extended reality is the next stage for the VR technology that we've seen over the last few years. This is getting rolled out now in industry. We're seeing more and more of this. Some fascinating use cases out there. Um, you've only got to look on YouTube and watch people driving forklift trucks remotely to see that this is now becoming reality. Holograms are maybe a few more years away, but the technology is getting there. I've seen a number of demonstrations now. Very, very impressive. I kind of just love the technology. Uh, I don't think it's quite commercially viable yet, but in 10 years' time, when 6G starts to roll out, it probably will be. 
these technologies require extremely high bit rates in order to work. So we're talking about hundreds of gigabits per second to get really high efficiency holographic transmission. Data replicas is another interesting area. So we're seeing an awful lot of uh, digital twin technology coming along, being able to manage factories uh, with a real factory working alongside the digital twin factory, remote monitoring, and again, the use of holographic displays, VR, XR, in order to control those factories. So all of that is putting strains on the current 5G network. So for 6G, we need higher bit rates, lower latencies. So it seems on the surface to be more of the same. Uh, and to some extent it is. We really need to have uh, improvement in the performance of the networks. How are we going to do that? Well, what we're starting to do is first of all, look at different architectures, different architectural requirements, the way that we can split uh, intelligence and computing power amongst the network. We're seeing a whole set of requirements coming in on trustworthiness, uh, especially with artificial intelligence. How do I know what a decision, what decisions being made and how it's being made? So the candidate technologies that we're looking at are listed here. I'll quickly talk about some of these now. Terahertz technology, this is the frequency bands that we operate in. So we've gone from millimeter wave, uh, which kind of goes up to around kind of 30, 40 gigahertz. It's not really terahertz, actually, it's sub terahertz. We're talking 140 gigahertz up to about 300 gigahertz frequency band. We're going to need a whole raft of new technologies to make this work. Those two new technologies are just being developed now. We need to develop them now in order to have these commercially available in 10 years time. So those technologies that are the, the basic building blocks, so power amplifiers, HD converters, whole raft of uh, stuff, including antennas. So for antennas, we're starting to look at different techniques for these really high frequency antennas using metamaterials for the beam forming. We need beam forming because at higher frequencies, the range is less because propagation losses increase. So we need narrower beams to get that range back again. We're starting to see the use of reflective surfaces. So putting panels, passive panels onto walls to increase the coverage. And of course, this is where things like AI come in for the planning tools as well. Full duplex technology has been talked about again for many years. Uh, technically, it's been very difficult to do. So we transmit and receive on the same frequency in the same t at the same time. That puts uh, a lot of constraints on the radio because we are transmitting interference directly into our receiver, and we have to reduce that interference with interference cancellation methods. Those methods are getting significantly better over time. The technology is getting better. So by the time we get to 6G, I think this will be built into the system from day one. The network topology is changing. We're just seeing now the use of relaying nodes in 5G. Uh, IAB is the technology in 3GPP that we have developed. That allows you to both use the base station as a relay node and also serve traffic, but without having to have a fiber connection to every base station. It reduces the cost of the network rollout. And we've started to see an awful lot of that uh, in our networks in the US. We're also seeing the use of satellite communication. Satellites, especially the lower or the low earth orbit uh, systems, they are starting to get to the stage now where people are putting the money behind them. We'll see how successful they are, but they provide plenty of opportunities for us uh, for the future. AI and machine learning for communications, as I said, we're using a lot of those techniques in the systems today. Comprehensive AI is where we bring all those technologies together. 
So instead of having a separate bit of AI to do our network planning and a separate bit to do our network management and a separate bit in the networks in the middle doing uh, power optimization, we bring all of those techniques together. One of the outcomes of this will be increased amounts of spectrum sharing. So spectrum is always the limiting resource in all our systems, or it has been so far to date probably will continue to be in 6G. The network operators are more and more willing I think, to look at this spectrum sharing technologies. The AI is getting a lot better at managing that, making sure that we can improve, increase performance overall. Split computing is where we look at different compute architectures for different devices connected to the network. So today, when we have a mobile phone, especially the high-end mobile phones, they have plenty of computing power in them. They can do all sorts of clever stuff. But if I've got my smart TV or my smart watch or even my really low-cost IoT device, they have less capability, but we may want to do the same things. So what we're starting to look at is architectures where for some devices, everything runs on the phone. For other devices, we start putting some of those compute technologies into the core network and that is into both the cloud-based core network and also the mobile edge node so when will all this happen well we are looking at this technology now we're developing some of the key elements as i speak we will probably start standards work in the next two or three years in 3gpp commercial networks probably around about 2030. So just to conclude, we have now commercial networks on 5G. We're still doing technology development on 5G, but slowly we're starting to see the start of 6G research. We're starting to see this 10 year roadmap pan out in front of us. And we're working towards the next generation of hyper connected experience. Thank you. Thank <music> you.